It gives me great pleasure to welcome Bill Gross, the investment rock star of our age. So Bill, come on up here. <laughs> Too generous. <laughs> oh, Consuelo, you're too generous. Uh, but uh, now that we're talking about love potions and uh, investment outlooks, the um, the one this month that's going to print tonight, it'll be on the website tomorrow. It's called uh, Doo Doo Economics. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to leave that to your imagination. Uh, <laughs> But there's some doo-doo in there, and there's some economics. So. Well, I have to ask you, because I know that Sue uh, takes some editing uh, privileges with you, and, and that, that there are some times that she advises you not to use certain she phrases. Did, did this pass the smell tests? <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, we, talked to the, we got the idea by walking uh, Corona Del Mar this weekend and, and watching people, which, which uh, we all do, um, pick up after their dogs with their little blue bags. So that, right. So that's the doo-doo part. All right, there. well, I, I look forward. <laughs> you heard it first here, in other words. This is another wise first, which is great. So I want to make sure that, number one, all of you can hear us. Can you? And also, can all of you see Bill, who is the person you really want to see? So I just, I, I don't want to block his view. Yep. So Bill, you know, tell us about the new normal. It, it's, it's a world of, of slower economic growth and, and lower investment returns. So how much slower, how much lower, and then you can tell us why. Okay. Um, well, to the, to the extent that people banked on and, and actually realized 8 to 9 to 10% returns over the past uh, 20 years, at least up until a few years ago, um, you know, it's now, uh, in our opinion, Four to five percent, so so probably half, cut in half. Um, and the same thing with real growth, uh, to the extent that the uh, the U.S. economy grew at uh, three and four, uh, we now expect one and two, and and that would be um, for the next five or ten years, as opposed to the next few months. So so why do you think we we are in for such a, a, a slow growth environment? Right, um, it, it's a long explanation. I have to. Cut it short. Uh, we don't well, have... we've got some time here, okay. and, and you know, and, yeah. and I'm, the details are, are really important. And I, I, I'm just going to take my watch out because I just want to make sure that I, I leave some uh, time for questions from the audience as well. So, so okay. you know, to tell it. I mean, I'll give you two minutes. Give cut, us, cut yeah, me give off us a after two, and then we'll go, <laughs> we'll go into other things. But, cut to the chase. Um, you know, if, if you if you understand to understand the the new normal, um, I think it's necessary to explore the old the old normal and the old normal really in the United States um, and, and globally was a world for the past 20 or 30 years in which, um, which regulation was deregulated that, that started with Reagan and Thatcher uh, in which um, financial leverage was compounded at an incredible rate and that culminated with the subprimes and the liar loans and those types of things but was, was evident in all of the other um, mystical uh, derivatives, um, CD, CDS, CDOs, um, there are a lot of names for them, but basically the world uh, you know, got caught up in a, in a levered frenzy um, under the, with the understanding that nothing could go wrong, and, and it's probably best epitomized with U.S. housing. That, you know, three or four years ago, most of us in this room, uh, probably even at PIMCO, felt that housing just didn't go down, and, and so that was, the, that was the epicenter, really, of the, the sense that um, the economic growth, the inflation, um, you know, the Goldilocks, Goldilocks type of economy would persist forever. And, and the explanation of the old economy was that it, in part, it, it, it came about because of the, the leverage and the securitization and the risk taking um, that propelled uh, the economy ever upward and, and, and um, failed to, um, to produce, aside from the the first dot-com bust, um, you know, a significant downward thrust that, that uh, scared capitalists. Now, um, you know, things have changed, and, and the, the world basically is undergoing um, three primary trends that produce this new normal. Uh, the first is delevering. Um, 
you know, pretty obvious. It's even obvious uh, in this room in terms of spending habits and, and willingness to take risk and to buy a, a, a home on spec or what, you know, people don't want to do those things anymore because they know that uh, they might lose money. Right. Um, but banks are delivering uh, almost um, because they have to. Um, and many institutions have been forced out of business, the Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers, we all know the, the history. Um, but the, the deleveraging process, the, the moving down as opposed to moving up is well underway and, and may, may have uh, reach bottom, but nonetheless, it, 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 it's not a levered world that we're looking forward to in the future. Uh, the other slowing influence would be re-regulation. Um, Uncle Sam, for better or for worse, like it or not, will be involved in our lives, um, and, and certainly uh, within the financial complex, uh, much more so than it has been for the last uh, 20 or 25 years. This is a hands-on uh, movement now as opposed to a hands-off. And whenever you get government involved, um, re-regulating, uh, controlling, uh, basically, and I go too far when I speak to General Motors, but the example is there, uh, running companies as opposed to the private side of the marketplace, then growth tends to slow down. The third um, ongoing development, which will probably take years to unwind, um, is, is deglobalization. The world did, did very well over the past 10 to 15 years in terms of trade, in terms of expansion, removal of trade barriers and the like. And now, um, while it, it, it's not really resembling the 1930s in, in terms of smooth hauling and those negative types of uh, tariffs, um, there is certainly um, each country for itself um, in, in terms of ongoing developments trade restrictions, agreements between countries, Brazil and China have a separate little deal, uh, so to speak. And so the, the global trade that we once knew and the freedom to uh, explore markets is basically uh, pulling back as opposed to expanding. So for all those reasons, you know, growth um, in the old normal uh, probably won't resemble growth in the new normal. So, so which of those, the delevering we know is going to go on for a long time, uh, re-regulation and, and uh, deglobalization, I feel like the jury could still be out in, on those two. Number one, you know, we, with the Obama administration focusing so much on health care reform, you know, I, I, a lot of people are saying that deregulation has become kind of the poor stepchild, and so how much deregulation is really going to get done? And as far as the deglobalization, uh, you know, it, it's something that you know PIMCO is really great at, at anticipating events before they happen. But it, is it possible that, that those two might not happen, and therefore that the new normal uh, might, in fact, lead to the higher growth and higher investment returns? We can only hope. Um, you know, right. are any of those three vulnerable? Yeah, I think to some extent, and that's why I put them two, three, right? If I if right. I thought that they were the the focal point, then they would have been number one as opposed to the delevering. Um, yeah, the re-regulating has been put on hold. Healthcare is front and center. Right. And um, you know, it, it is fair and honest to say that that there's a significant lobby in Washington. Um, for the financial industry, for the banks, uh, for all of those that uh, don't want to be re-regulated. Uh, right. I mean, there's, there was even a, 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 a moment three to six months ago where we felt that PIMCO, um, an investment manager, uh, would be subject to regulation, and, and we weren't going to like that very much either. Um, but in any case, the, yeah, the re-regulation at the moment appears to be on the second page as opposed to the first page right. and, and it it does depend upon you know clearing the agenda with health care and the like and and perhaps um, a an economy in the United States that is uh, that is viewed as green shoots and improving as opposed to to moving back down if if we move back down in 2010 then then re-regulation and regulation will gain front and center um, because Main Street will, um, not all of a sudden, but will uh, continue to feel disadvantaged versus Wall Street, and I think they have a good case. Right, so the populism, uh, and, right. The, and right, 